way I think I can help bridge Barclays from the turmoil of being the only one out and bridge them so that this is looked at in the true context of being about an industry uh, and about LIBOR in addition to Barclays and uh, prevent the damage to the reputation that's happened over the last week. The best way for me to do that was to step down. That was former Barclays CEO Bob Diamond explaining in recent days why he had to step down in the wake of an interest rate scandal. But who's really to blame for this? I guess you could call it a scandal. We're, we're going to talk to uh, yeah. James Freeman, our assistant editorial page editor, who joins me now to discuss. James, welcome. Thanks, Ray. Uh, James, this is a scandal that's now bridging several continents. We've yes. had uh, not just Barclays, but several other banks mentioned here. Uh, an interest rate fixing scandal on something called LIBOR. Uh, what's going on and why is Barclays being singled out? Yeah, LIBOR is uh, basically the uh, supposed to be the rate at which banks are lending to each other. So it takes averages reported by various banks. and. Uh, the uh, allegation here, uh, Barclays was basically the first to settle with governments in the UK and the US. Uh, the allegation is that they, uh, they fudged the rate, it, that they weren't reporting accurate numbers on what it was costing them to borrow from other banks, uh, both before the financial crisis and during. But uh, it's going to be difficult to uh, kind of parse uh, who's really at fault because, as we know, governments have been working full time to try and manipulate these kind of rates down <laughs> since uh, roughly two, 2007, 2008. So it uh, won't be easy to tell where their action ends and the private market begins. Yeah, I wanted to talk to you about that because Mr. Diamond partially fingered uh, the government and, and, and regulators here. Do you think he, he has a case? Well, it's going to be interesting. He basically, uh, he said, one of my... Uh, uh, executives here interpreted a message from the Bank of England to be you guys should uh, should fudge it down further. Now the Bank of England official uh, Paul Tucker says well I, I now I want to come back and testify to Parliament and clarify <laughs> what I was saying but uh, you're gonna have a problem and, and you I think this is why these cases they settled with Barclays you're probably gonna see settlements with the other big banks is you would have a big problem uh, trying to prosecute these cases in court because it's gonna get pretty complicated. This is a, the LIBOR is kind of a benchmark that trillions of financial transactions are based on, but uh, the LIBOR reports that these banks were giving, uh, they're kind of estimates every day. They're not uh, necessarily exact figures, and so uh, establishing what they should have been versus what they reported won't be easy. And James, why would these banks want to underreport numbers? This is not, a, uh, by the way, a new scandal uh, for viewers out there who haven't been following this. This is something that happened years ago uh, in yeah, the middle of the financial kudos, crisis. So. Kudos to our colleagues on the news side of the paper, who in 2008 uh, really uh, broke this story and had a big analysis showing that uh, if you look at the credit default swap market, a lot of these banks should have been reporting uh, higher funding costs. In other words, they were probably uh, uh, given higher rates if they wanted to borrow from other banks than they were reporting publicly. And so, uh, you know, that, that's a question of why is this coming to light now? Um, Barclays uh, has settled. Uh, we'll see about the other banks. But the more sort of damaging PR black eye for Barclays is uh, even before the crisis, uh, internal emails suggesting that they were trying to manipulate the rate to uh, benefit their particular trading positions. And uh, I think that's what sort of raised questions about uh, big banks and uh, the ethics uh, within them and so forth. Well, James, I mean, some of these emails are also sort of master of the universe type emails. Well, that's these the guys question. kind of boasting I mean, to each other, too. Yeah, right? you wonder, I mean, to what extent they actually could move this average, uh, because the way it works, they have 16 banks and the top four and the lowest four are thrown out every day. So a lot of times, even if you moved your rate, it wouldn't actually count.